the side. I think it's really cool that like you you, you took the time to like come out with the, the rest of us tonight. Because usually you're in bed by this time. Dude, but... I never fucking party, bro. I know. Always stay at home. Or like make a brief appearance and then just like fuck off. Yeah, yeah and everyone's like, like, oh, there he is. And then off you go again. I, I, I don't feel like I'm usually the party animal type of dude, you know. Hey. So, I'm going to suggest something. I've been thinking about it for like maybe the last 10 minutes. So, get this. How about we tell some spooky stories? Come on, are we, are we 10? Are you serious? Come on, man. I mean, look, look around us. It's, it's, childish it's crap, the bro. perfect vibe. Right, look, we got a fire here, it's spooky. There's like the more porks around. Spooky ass. All right, you're so keen on it, you start us off then. Go you on. Know tell what? me something, I'll get scared of. You know what? Yeah, I know I will. I think I will. All right, get this. So, um, uh, there's uh, the two brothers, yeah, um, and they're 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 real tight, Ooh. and they and they buy a farm because they're gonna make it big, yeah. And, you know, they, they, they do everything together. And they, like, Come on, bro, you can do better than that. I, you can do better than okay, that. Okay, okay, right. So they used to say there's this thing, right, that lived on their farm, yeah. um, and and they, and they creeped into their house and they got into the into one of the brothers and he started seeing stuff like a figure. He started right, seeing a figure right. every. Like what? Dude, you're not you're not telling a story, you're, you're describing an event. Now give me some pizzazz, bro. Give me something to... Uh, uh, hey, well, know. if you're so high and mighty about this, even though you didn't like the idea, you give us something then. Come on. Alright. Well, it's better than your story, too. Yeah, you know, it better be. Alright. Alright, so you got these two friends. Right, best friends. Best friends since they were, they were born, you know, childhood friends. Went to the same school together, every class, every break you'd see them together, they'd be, you know, playing sport on the weekends, terrorizing those back streets on their bikes, you know, kind of a cul de sac type life. And um, the, their favorite place to go was this place called the Greenfield. Right? And it was like, Two, two blocks south and a bike ride away from where they both live. Just their favorite place to go, man. This is the, the place that they felt the most free. You know, away from the, the, the stresses of mum and dad and the school, the homework, all that bullshit. You know, they could just go out there and, and be themselves. So, end of summer comes. It's the last day of school. They leave school early, lunchtime leaving type thing. They just want to go straight to this green field, right? They've been building it up all summer. They ride up, they get there, park their bikes by the pylon just under that one light pole under the firehouse. They just go, oh, man. Free, free as. Yes. You, couldn't, you couldn't find two people in a bit of space. They just ran straight into the green fields. They'd run circles around each other. Mark and Polo, hide and seek, you know, that, that, that type of shit. They were just having fucking best time. Suddenly the, the sun falls over the clouds and you get this, this deep purple haze over the green field. The birds, they stop chirping. The boys, they stop laughing. Take Fred scared. He says, I'm scared. I can't do it. This, this isn't happening. First friend, he feels betrayed. You know, they've been thinking about this all summer. Didn't think so. I wasn't having a bar of it. They try to play. They try to continue. It ends in another fight. The second second friend gets scared. He runs into the grain field. He just takes off. So. First friend sits there. He waits for him. And he waits for him some more. He saw where he left. Surely he'd come back the same way. This is the grain field, they know, they know this spot. But he doesn't come back. Minutes. Went after some minutes. It felt like hours that he'd been waiting there for his friend to come out. Disappointed, he decides he's gonna, he's gonna go home. Upset, of course, he feels really betrayed, then suddenly a piercing troop cuts through the midnight air. The friend, he drops to the ground. He doesn't know where the shriek came from. He doesn't want to know, he just wants to get down. So 
heart is just lying there, beating like a drum, pounding out of his chest to scream out of nowhere. First friend, he bolts straight to the grain field. He knows where he's going. He doesn't want to know where the sound came from. He just goes. Just runs. He looks right, left, forward, backwards, forwards, backwards again, and then. day in the shadow of the moonlight, a silhouette of a farmer and his sickle, cutting of the grass, slash, slash, he goes after the first boy, he just keeps running, he sees a clearing that he's going to go for and then suddenly, his foot trips, he looks behind him and he sees the body, covered in mosquitoes, Brutally scarred with a fresh slash, lying motionless. It's free. He knows. It's too much. He runs, he goes, he goes back to the light pole under the farmhouse where he parked the two bikes. He just hops on his one, leaves his friends behind him. He just goes. shame they didn't open an investigation because you know they only found two trail marks in the grave. It wasn't the third. This this didn't happen, did it? <laughs> Fuck yeah it did man. And you think the rent on this place is so cheap? Fuck everyone in this town knows about that story. Nobody wants to fucking live here, bro. I, th I think I understand now. 